Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday, guys. I feel like we're reporters. Yes, welcome to the Peter and Mary show. You have a little fluffy on your eye, on the other eye, in the eye, in the eye. In the eye? On that side, let me see. You got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we're reporters. Because we are sitting I, at a table. I guess because we're sitting at a table. We have a microphone and we're sitting in a little lighted studio. I feel like it's important that we address the elephant in the room. Okay. Why there is a headboard behind us. Yes, this is an important element of our lives. We're sitting at a table in front of a headboard. We're in what used to be our guest bedroom. And then it was... What was it after the guest bedroom? Um, it was the Ollie Boy, Ollie Dog packing station. Oh yeah, this was an extension of our online storeroom. And then it we brought the dining room table up here and it's kind of a dining room, although we don't eat up here. We have a few times. Yep. But Mary is getting ready to hook up to IVIG and... I was about to start this and he's like, hey, you want to film the Monday video? Like, sure, IV and a chat. I was like, we're sitting at the table in front of the camera anyway, so we might as well just uh, chat with the people. Yeah. But we set up this little uh, studio area so that Mary and I can uh, record some Monday videos and some extra what we call sit-down videos where the camera's just sitting in front of us and we're just talking to you guys. Versus like a vlog we consider holding the camera. Yes. Technically. Yeah, those are those are the two kinds of videos we make. Vlogs and sit down videos. And we since we started taking um, Mondays off of posting well, we don't take it Sundays off of filming, we post on Monday something different, either a live stream or a sit down video or whatever kind of video we make. But do you want to tell us about IVIG? Um no. Okay. I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, so I VIG, I do it every 21 days, basically, every three weeks. And it is a blood product. It's, it's human blood product. It's, um, yeah, immunoglobulins. So it's clear. It doesn't look like blood. And it is processed. Oh, see, I knew this was going to happen. I need to pay attention. Okay. You can talk you about pay it. You pay attention. I need to pay I'll, attention. I'll talk about IVIG. Mary does it every three weeks and she's getting ready to hook up and we have this tight window today of when she can do it because she's hooked up to IVs. She's on three IV antibiotics right now. Plus IV fluids. Yes. So between all of that. There's plus... like this window between 5 p.m. which it is right now and... 9 p.m., which really, like, 8, you'd usually start your fluids, right? Yeah. But 9 p.m., she'll start her IV fluids. So this takes four hours. Anyways, we're making it work. So you can kind of see it filling up the bag. I have to hold these up because it's, like, gravity pulling it in. And, <clears throat> yeah, I, I remember when, I guess it was, like, probably two and a half years ago when a nurse came out and taught me how to do this. And I wrote down every single step. We, we wrote down like, hook up to fat tubing. This is the fat tubing. Hook up to skinny tubing. This is the skinny tubing. You know, like all the different steps. And now two and a half years later, I just do it. Of course, I, think it, I need to stay focused. Yeah, you stay focused. I think it's funny. IVIG is the one like home IV thing that we do that I haven't learned. Although, I, I, I think at this point you would... I've helped Mary with it, but I've never, like, done it on my own. And I know it's just, like, mix, like mixing the drugs into the bag, basically. It's not mixing. Or, like... Transferring. Transferring, yeah. <clears throat> and so, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's just, like, it's how to hook up the tubing and all that, right? Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah, it's just kind of learning the process of the tubing and, like, don't clamp this until after you transfer it. And then once you transfer it, yeah. take this off and put the cap on without touching the end. You know, like little things, but you already have the basis 
the basics down because you do it with all the other IV stuff. Yeah, so. we, we, we've been really thankful to be at home for this course of IVs. It's, uh, it's a lot of work though. I, this is an interesting question. So on Instagram, another CF patient had commented, I posted a picture. Oh, I of, saw that comment. Mm, yeah. One daily IV amounts, drugs. And uh, one patient said, and that is when I go to the hospital. Um, because it's too much and the nurses can help with that yeah. and that is totally true but it's interesting that <clears throat> at different okay for different patients and at different times in your life you do things at home or in the hospital or whatever and it's interesting where we are in life the last few years my blood counts and figuring out my blood counts and figuring out what meds do what to my blood counts has necessitated me being in the hospital. And because of that, we have appreciated that they do the IVs through the night. And we have appreciated that they take, you know, some of the pressure off of us. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, here we are. And because my blood counts are stable, I have the opportunity to do it from home. So we're like, hey, bring on all the IVs. It's fine. We get to be at home. So... I think it's funny though because when we started this course of IVs, we oh, yeah. started on two IV antibiotics and she was inhaling the vancomycin. And then an oral. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. it was, in some ways, the schedule was less exhausting. You focus on what you're doing. And so it was kind of like, I think even if we started with three from the beginning, we'd want to be at home. But it's yeah, just it would have been a harder more. decision though. Yeah. Plus, we would have, yeah. So, I will say, <clears throat> one challenge of being at home, I'm going to pause for one second so I can tell you guys a secret. Mm -hmm. I learned this from somebody else on IVs. When you're priming this tubing, don't break off that little yellow piece. If you work with this pump, you know exactly what I mean. Don't break that piece off until you prime it, and you can prime it manually. Um, pretty easily and you can see it kind of flowing through you guys won't be able to see okay, it yeah that'd be great um, priming priming do you remember the first time you learned to do home IVs um I do was it exciting or daunting I was 11 yeah so my parents did it okay but like when but. you learned to do it yourself I guess it was probably a gradual learning yeah from your it parents. wasn't daunting yeah I mean in college it was a little slightly daunting so because I was like sleep deprived and trying to get all of my medications in at the right time and all that but <clears throat> okay so we were talking about what what was I talking about and uh, I was like oh I'm gonna pause that so I can do this you were telling uh we some patients about? Oh, oh, I know, I know. So this was a particular challenge of being at home. For this time, I'm on vancomycin, which you need to have the right blood level, uh, drug level. And so you got to make sure that your body is absorbing it, not too much and not too little. So in the hospital, we could probably figure out that level a little quicker. Um, however, you do have to wait four doses like you have to wait four doses and that's the same amount of time in the hospital versus out of the hospital but i do think it has been a longer process because we're at home but thankfully it's yeah it's fine it's just kind of one of those challenges but it's a challenge that my team is fine with and we are fine with and so for this time that's what we're doing Pump's getting started. This so, IV is done. I'm unhooking from this. I need to get a saline. Okay. <clears throat> She's going to get a saline. We'll hook her up to her IVIG. Did you take your pre-meds? Not yet. She takes Benadryl and Tylenol before each dose because there's like that risk of because it's every dose is unique that every dose has a risk of reaction. So it just kind of preps her body for foreign antibodies basically yeah 
but yeah so that's kind of the process of IVIG and at this point I will go kind of set myself up in the bedroom and <clears throat> veg out for three or four hours because I'm going to be a little extra drowsy from the Benadryl but I'm pretty used to it at this point. She's a pro at this whole IVIG thing. I'm proud of you. Thanks. You're welcome. I couldn't do it without him because um, I couldn't do it independently without him because I need somebody. I, I think it is recommended that another human be in the house when you're doing IVIG because if you do start having a reaction, uh, you need you need somebody there. Yeah, but and, and Mary's checking her vitals. Yeah, I was just, every yeah. You said that. No, I was just going to. Oh, okay. You read my mind. Every fifteen minutes, or is it fifteen? It's not. It's, it's whenever like, the uh, rate changes. Yeah. So the pump changes the rate. Is. So at first, it's like thirty minutes, and then it's an hour later, and then it's two hours. Whatever. It's a, it. Periodically. It basically the home IV company programs the pump so that it does this program where it incremental incre no keypad activity. I'm gonna need to go do this, but yeah, it, it incrementally, incrementally increases, increases it's, it, gradually it gradually gets the gets drug <laughs> into her system. Anyways, it's thanks thanks for uh, tuning in. Um, and hanging out with us on this Monday. And as, as always, always, have a good week. We will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, guys. Good, good night. night. <clears throat> I need to get this. Do you want to get Ollie for the good night? Yeah. Oh, wow. And good night to the 